There have been multiple stories coming out in a span of a month or even just a few weeks of husbands and fathers ending the lives or trying to end the lives of their entire families. These stories are just now hitting the news, so there's no motives as to why any of these homicides have happened yet, but let's take a look at our first case in Utah. In Enoch, Utah, January 4th, 2023, eight people from one family, including five children, were found shot to death inside a southern Utah home. The children's father, 42-year-old Michael Height, is suspected of ending the lives of his children, his wife, 40-year-old Tasha Height, and Tasha's mother, 78-year-old Gail Earl, before ending his own life, officials say. The children were identified by age on January 5th as a 17-year-old girl, a 12-year-old girl, a 7-year-old girl, a 7-year-old boy, and a 4-year-old boy, according to a news release from Enoch City. On that same day, January 4th, police were asked to do a wellness check on the family at their home on the 4900 North Block of Albert Drive, where they found Michael Height and seven victims dead inside at around 4 p.m. City manager Rob Dotson stated in a news conference that Tasha Height had an important appointment with someone that she would never miss. When Tasha did not show up for the appointment and could not be reached out to, nor could the family of Tasha be reached, authorities were asked to check on the family. After Tasha wasn't found, a missing persons report was filed. A few hours later, the wellness check to locate Tasha became an effort to find the entire family, Dotson said. Enoch Mayor Jeffrey Chestnut grew emotional during a news conference on January 5th as he said the Height family were his neighbors and that their youngest children played in the yard with his sons. Enoch is a very close community. No one wants to leave here, Chestnut said. The neighbors are good, the people are wonderful, and the efforts we make on one another's behalf is like family. He later noted Michael Height, the father suspected in the killings, had worked as a local insurance salesperson. The Height family were a church-going family close to their community. Everyone in Enoch who knew them are completely stunned as no one ever suspected the family could be involved in such a tragedy. By all accounts, they came off as a very close-knit loving family, but newer reports coming out paint that there could have been something a lot darker going on inside the Height family home. The Height family were previously known to police, authorities said. Chief Jackson Ames with the Enoch City Police Department said officers had been involved in investigations with the family a couple years prior. For now, police aren't saying what those investigations were for. Court records show Tasha Height had filed for divorce from Michael on December 21st, but it was not immediately known why she sought to end their marriage. Investigators state there are clues that Michael was not only physically abusing Tasha and their children, but also Tasha's mother Gail as well. Tasha and her mother Gail had recently bought a couple guns and taken up gun safety classes for protection. Days before Michael ended the lives of Tasha, Gail, and their five children, he removed the guns from the home, leaving the family vulnerable. As of right now, there's not much more information as to why this terrible crime took place, but I will be staying on top of this case once new details and facts emerge. The next case only takes place just a couple days after the Height family homicide. On January 7th, deputies from the Detroit, Michigan, Allegan County Sheriff's Office were dispatched around 12.35 p.m. when a man called 911 after going to the residence to check on his family members. According to police, when the man didn't get a response at the door, he began looking in windows and saw his niece unresponsive in a bedroom on the bottom floor of the bi-level residence. When police arrived, they discovered Cindy Klaus, 35, Roger Kyle Hager, 34, and their daughters, Mackenzie, 10, and Autumn, 13, dead from apparent gunshot wounds. Autumn would have turned 14 on January 10th. Police believe Hager shot himself after shooting the three other victims. We are deeply saddened by the loss of Cindy, Autumn, and Mackenzie, family wrote in a statement. Cindy was a loving mother who cared deeply for her family. Autumn wanted to be a dermatologist, and Mackenzie wanted a big family. 
stating in an awful moment they were violently taken from this world and the ripples of pain and anguish have reverberated through their family and friends. A man who identified himself as a longtime friend rushed to the scene after hearing the news from a neighbor. Nick LaPointe said, I looked at Facebook and I didn't believe it. Then his cousin called me and I still didn't believe it. And my mom called me and I didn't believe it. And I am here because it can't be real. He said it makes no sense. Nick LaPointe questioned why he ended the lives of his kids, saying, have you ever seen a family that just meshed? That's them. This can't happen, LaPointe said. Loved his kids more than anything in this world. He's the best father I've ever seen. LaPointe stated he talked to Hager over the phone a few days ago. He was in a great mood as usual. He's always in a good mood, recalled LaPointe. One neighbor told news he heard shots around noon. I heard a couple of shots, about three in a row. They were very fast, repetitive. There was like three seconds silence, and then after that, maybe another six shots or so, all in a row. It happened very quickly, said neighbor Kevin Hedgemansic. He wondered if they were from hunters. Then he saw the Allegan County Sheriff's cars. Deputies and firefighters blocked the street for hours. The neighbor said the family kept to themselves. Two daughters. It's a horrible, horrible thing. You hear about it. You never think it's going to happen across the road. The Allegan County Sheriff's Office is still investigating. Anyone with any information is asked to contact the Allegan County Sheriff's Office at 268 673-0500. On January 4th, a family of four is still hospitalized after a father intentionally drove off a cliff in California. The driver of a car that plunged off a treacherous cliff in Northern California, injuring his two young children and his wife after the 250-foot drop, remained hospitalized with serious injuries according to the California Highway Patrol. Darmish A. Patel of Pasadena will be booked into the San Mateo County Jail on suspicion of attempted homicide and child abuse after he's released from the hospital, the Highway Patrol said. He was in serious but stable condition and has not been cleared by doctors to leave. Rescuers initially hailed the family's survival as a miracle after the Tesla sedan plummeted down a notorious cliffside along the Pacific Coast Highway near an area called Devil's Slide known for fatal wrecks. Firefighters were forced to cut the family out of the wreckage. They used a rope system to haul the children up the cliff in a rescue basket while the parents were hoisted by a helicopter. Patel's family included his 41-year-old wife, 7-year-old daughter, and 4-year-old son, whose names have not been released. Investigators are looking into Patel's motives and past. They have no idea what his thought pattern was. Investigators do not have to present the case to prosecutors until after Patel is booked into jail. Patel is a doctor in radiology at the Providence Holy Cross Medical Center in the Mission Hills area of Los Angeles. The family has no known record of domestic violence in the home. Neighbors have spoken about their shock as the Patel seemed like the perfect family and they were often seen walking their children and giving cookies to neighbors. They're a beautiful, idyllic family no indication of issues, Roger Newmark told the news. It's so strange because he is a great guy. Maybe it's a moment of insanity. Another neighbor, Sarah Walker, stated he's just so present. Darmesh and I would wave hi, but he would always come over and have a conversation. He was always happy and ready to talk. So with everything we're being told about Patel being a nice guy and the little information that investigators have, how do they see this as a homicide as opposed to an accident? Well, this is not the first time something like this has happened. It is possible investigators did not see any skid marks indicating brakes were being applied. Also, depending on the condition of the car, they can tell if any intentional speed up occurred. So far, investigators with their limited evidence see this as intentional and not accidental. Not even a week apart from these other horrible crimes, on January 7th, two people were seen screaming for help in High Point, North Carolina, leading police to a gruesome scene. Five people were discovered dead, shot. Around 7.05 in the morning, an adult male and an adult female led police to the bodies of five deceased victims. 
including three children and two adults. Officers did a forced entry into the home and went through the home in what they call a protective sweep to check for victims and anyone in the home. They ended up locating three juveniles who were deceased and two adults who were deceased. Investigators later interviewed the two people who screamed for help. One of the two lived in the home and the other person was a visitor. According to records cited by Fox News, officials had received calls to the home in 2014, 2016, 2019, and January 2022. A neighbor told investigators that they had woken up Saturday morning to two people banging on their door and ringing their doorbell asking for help, that someone was trying to kill them, and the man said it was his father. The neighbor had no clue what to do, stating something like this has never happened here before and they just decided to call 911 and leave it up to police because they did not want to put their life or their family's life at risk. So far, there is little to no information released, not even the names of the family members, but investigators call it one of the worst scenes they have ever came upon. The father has had bouts of violence against his family in the past. In just a week's time, we have multiple fathers taking their family's lives or attempted to with three having in common they were nice guys, with everyone in the community shocked. These stories are as perplexing as they are horrible, and I will be covering them more, so please subscribe and hit that notification button.